Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Obviously, if you've been watching this broadcast over the last three, five days when we lost the 50-day moving average, we keep on reiterating the same thing. There's rules, right? There's rules trading a sell interval. Anything below the 50-day moving average, you do not buy into strength, okay? Especially on gap ups. It's it, you're, you're buying stock at the supply. We've seen now, we've seen this play out now in five consecutive days. Here's the proof, right? You have every single candle turning red at the close. That means the open got sold. So stop buying these stocks into gap ups. Nothing good's going to happen below daily supply. And the second thing we continuously talk about, guys, buying dips is a bull market thesis. When a stock goes linear and confirms the daily channel, when it opens on a light volume, on a soft open into rising daily support, you buy the dip. You cannot buy dips in a bear sell cycle. Again, if you're a long-term investor, just leave. There's no reason for you to be here. I, I understand NVIDIA is going to be at 160 after earnings. I get it. Apple is going to be at 300. Everything is going to be great in the world, but it's not going to happen tomorrow, right? And that's the whole point. There's no guarantee that your stock, when you want to, because you're buying it on the dip, is going to get it to your area where you want it, okay? So it's a trader's market. We're a trader's channel. I run a trader's platform, okay? This is not, you know, guessing where a stock is going to be after earnings. Your guess is as good as mine where these stocks are are going to be a week from now, two weeks from now, three months from now. Uh, all you need to do is reference, right? All you do need to do is reference 2022. What happened, right? We lost a 50-day moving average. What happened after? The NASDAQ was down 36%, 35% for the year. And at any point, if you bought anything on the dip, it took you a year and a half probably to get it back. So look, if that's the case and you are, and you think a stock is cheap, and you want to buy it for 10 years, that's great, but I don't want to hear your opinion, okay? There's a cordial line that has to be addressed between traders and investors, right? An investor is all about, I think, and I'm just using NVIDIA as a point of reference. Again, the 12-year-olds, don't start screaming my ear, right? NVIDIA is going to be great. They're AI. They're going to kill their earnings in a couple of weeks. Yeah, you're probably right. I want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. So the most important part is there's a language that's very disconnected between a trader and an investor. Investor has their opinions about the long-term outlook of what a company is going to do, where their stock price is going to be in the next 6 to 12 to 18 months. A trader wants to know, how can I take advantage of that channel, whether it's long, short, or indifferent? How can I take advantage of that channel tomorrow, right? Not next week, not when they're coming out with their AI numbers. I want to know how I could take advantage of, of the information, the data that's in front of me this tomorrow. And that's exactly it. So again, if you're frustrated, and again, I get it. I'm doing this for 25 years. There's a lot of emotion involved. If when you're a brand new, especially investor, and you have kids, and you, and you have, you're starting out, and your portfolio is looking like death, right? Is absolutely death. I get it. You're emotional. I get it. I'm sympathetic to that. But you can't voice your opinion to a trader. Their timeline is different. Their approach is different. Your whole experience is different. I'll give you a perfect example, right? I was born in the former Soviet Union. I got here when I was four or five years old. I'm 50 now, okay? The Russian language and the Polish language, they kind of sound similar, right? They kind of sound similar. There's certain words that sound the same. But I am telling you, I cannot speak Polish and a Polish person cannot speak Russian. That's the bottom line. So there's no difference between the cordial mannerisms between an investor and a trader. If you're a trader, talk to the traders. If you're an investor, stick with the with, with the investors. The two worlds shouldn't meet, right? They shouldn't meet because there's absolutely, you know, if you're an investor, you're doing zero, zero for the person who is trading. Maybe it could be an hour trade, a two-day trade a 30-minute trade, you're doing nothing for them. Trust me, you're not going to sway their opinion because you think your stock is going to be 20x three years from now, okay? Respect each other, guys. That's the simple rule of life. Whether it's trading, you, you know, baseball cards, uh, best, you, know, uh, uh, you know, baseball cards, you know, you're, you're a truck driver, you're a doctor, you're an attorney or a trader, respect the person. 
Nobody cares about your opinion. And I say that in the most respectful way I can, right? So if you want to live a nice, cordial life, happy, smile on your face with lack of step, stay in your space. That's it. Stay in your space. Everybody will probably get along and the world will be a better place.